Now it's time to talk about multiplication and division of fractions. And I will illustrate the principle here with a diagram. So look at this. Here's a rectangle. It's divided into four sections, and three of the sections are shaded. So the fraction that represents the shaded portion is, of course, 3 fourths. Okay, that's pretty easy. Now what I'm going to do is divide the rectangle again with some horizontal lines, like this. So these lines take my rectangle and divide it into thirds. And I'm going to shade two of the thirds. But instead of shading two thirds of the entire rectangle, I'm just going to take this portion, the three fourths, and I will shade in two thirds of that. So two thirds of the three fourths. So if I draw some diagonal lines here to represent shading of two-thirds, but not two-thirds of the entire thing, just two-thirds of the three-fourths, then I get a picture that looks something like this. And this part shaded here with the diagonal lines is two-thirds of the three-fourths. So let's write that. Two-thirds of three-fourths. And then it's helpful to remember that mathematically, the word of often means times. Of typically indicates multiplication. So saying two-thirds of the three-fourths is mathematically equivalent to saying two-thirds times three-fourths, and you can write that in your notes, two-thirds times three-fourths. Now with that in mind, take a look at the big picture again, look at the entire rectangle here, and notice that the, the vertical lines I had originally drawn, and then the horizontal lines also, divide the big rectangle up into 12 smaller rectangles this size. You can see I've got four in each row and three rows, so 12 altogether. And then this shaded portion here, the part with the diagonal lines, is 6 out of those 12. So that's 6 twelfths. So 2 thirds of the 3 fourths is 6 out of the 12. So we can write this as an equation. 2 thirds times 3 fourths equals 6 twelfths. And look at these numbers and notice this. Look, see the 2 and the 3, those multiply to give me 6. And what I'm doing here is multiplying. And look at the denominators. 3 times 4 gives me 12. Two fractions are multiplied together. And the numerators multiply to give me the numerator of my answer. And the denominators multiply to give me the denominator of my answer. And that is true not just in this specific case, but every time. Whenever you're multiplying fractions, you can multiply the numerators to get your numerator and multiply the denominators to get your denominator. And that is how we multiply fractions. So with that in mind, let's do some examples. So here are some examples, and these are really easy because the procedure is very simple. To multiply two fractions, just multiply the numerators. So 1 times 3 is 3. That gives me the numerator of my answer. And multiply the denominators. 2 times 5 is 10. So 1 half times 3 fifths is 3 tenths. Pretty simple. Over here, this one's really easy. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 11 is 11. Just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. And you could also get this another way. You know that 1 over 1 is just equal to 1, and 1 times anything is just that thing. So we end up with 1 11th. Down here, 3 fourths times 4 fifths. I do 3 times 4 gives me 12, and 4 times 5 gives me 20. Now this one you notice that these are both even numbers, so this fraction can be simplified. So let's, since they're both even numbers, let's divide them both by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. And those are both even numbers again, so let's do that another time. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 
and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 3 fifths is my answer in simplest form. And then over here, 2 ninths times 5 sevenths. Multiply the numerators, 2 times 5 is 10. And multiply the denominators, 9 times 7 is 63. And then I mentioned that we should always simplify our answers if possible, like we did here. Sometimes the answer comes out to a fraction that can be simplified. And if your answer can be simplified, it should be. So in this example, 3 fifths times 2 ninths. 3 times 2 is 6. And 9 times 5 is 45. And both of these numbers are divisible by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 45 divided by 3 is 15. So 2 fifteenths is the answer. And then one more um, similar to that. 3 eighths times 4 fifths. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12, and 8 times 5 is 40. And those are both even numbers. Divide them both by 2, and we get 6 over 20. And divide them by 2 again, and we get 3 over 10. So 3 tenths is the answer. And then realize that we can also multiply a number times a fraction. So this is 7 times 2 ninths. This is not the same thing as a mixed number. This is not 7 and 2 ninths. 7 and 2 ninths as a mixed number is the same thing as 7 plus 2 ninths. This is multiplication. We're multiplying a whole number and a fraction. And to do this, just remember that any whole number can be written as a fraction just by putting it over 1. 7 is the same thing as 7 over 1. So you can actually write the little over 1 like that. Or you just remember that 7 over 1 is equivalent to 7 being in the numerator. So to multiply this, we just do 7 times 2 is 14. So 14 is the numerator of the answer, and 1 times 9 is the denominator. 14 ninths is the answer. Same thing here. Uh, 5 eighths times 6. Just remember that 6 is the same as 6 over 1. I mean, you could go ahead and write it out as 5 eighths times 6 over 1 if you want to. Or you could just make your 6 a little fraction right here, 6 over 1. Or you could just remember that 6 is the same thing as 6 over 1, and that 6 is really in the numerator. And so the answer is 5 times 6, which is 30, over 8 times 1, which is just 8. And then in this case, the answer can be simplified a little bit. 30 and 8 are both even numbers, so let's divide them both by 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15 and 8 divided by 2 is 4, and we're done.